Welcome to the Tesla 10K review. Today we're gonna to go through Tesla's annual report, see if we find any cool stuff. Uh, highlighted what I thought were the coolest or most interesting parts to me, and we'll check them out. Now they're the world's only vertically integrated energy company, full end-to-end -end spectrum of electric cars, batteries, and solar roofs. Also on the first page, pretty interesting, they immediately call out the fact that they intend to begin volume production and deliveries of the Model 3 in the second half of 2017. So Tesla's telling you right here, this year, they want to bring volume deliveries of the Model 3 to the market. That word volume there is very key because it means they're not trying to do this on a small scale. They see the possibility to be able to deliver a significant amount of Model 3 vehicles. I'm guessing that could be in the neighborhood of, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 vehicles even this year. Still on page one here. And I think this is an important part with all the, we did an episode about the Tesla, Tesla network and the potential for the robot taxi fleet. Tesla is not only the most fuel efficient car in terms of the cheapest to refill up, but their act, cars are actually showing to break a lot less than internal combustion engine cars because they just have so many fewer moving parts. So not only are they vastly more fuel efficient, but they break less often. So the combination of these two factors really makes Tesla the perfect taxi. Uh, since 2006, Solar City has installed solar energy systems for over 325,000 customers. I thought this was interesting to highlight. I think this is the perfect target of people to buy Tesla, so a pretty sizable customer base that now they can market Tesla cars to. H2, we are current, currently using battery packs manufactured at Gigafactory 1 for energy storage and will build Model 3 battery packs and drive units at Gigafactory 1. Solar products are, are at our produce at our factory in Fremont and Buffalo, New York. So here they're kind of breaking down. They have Gigafactory number one, which is for the Model 3 and for batteries, and then Gigafactory two, which is for solar roofs. Just a testament to how great Tesla's technology is. The Model S 100D that they just released is the longest range electric production sedan in the world. I think it can go something like 300 plus miles on a single charge. And the performance version of this car is the quickest accelerating production vehicle in the world. So depending on how you spec out your Tesla, you can either get the one with the long longest electric range in the world or the quickest accelerating in the world. Uh, it just shows the versatility and prowess of Tesla's electric vehicle technology. Gigafactory 1 construction and Model 3 development both remain on plan to support volume Model 3 production and deliveries in the second half of 2017. The, the verbiage here is very important. They're throwing the word volume in there. That means they really think they're gonna be able to pump out a lot of Model 3s this year. As a shareholder, I'm super stoked about that. All the skeptic and bears tell you this won't happen, but they're putting it in the filing. So this is gonna be something to watch very closely going forward because if they change the language here, then that means that they've slipped up and they're gonna delay it. But right now we are still on track, seven, 2017 volume production and deliveries of Model 3. Favorite part about Tesla is they never stop. Not only are they gonna build more future consumer electric cars, but they wanna build commercial electric vehicles as well. So they're gonna be building pickup trucks. They're gonna be building commercial trucks. They're gonna expand their lineup of, of cars. Like Tesla is just not stopping. They're gonna keep innovating, keep unveiling new products, entering new categories for years to come. Can't wait to see how this part of their SEC filing evolves as we get deeper and deeper into their product line. Remember, Tesla's mission is to accelerate the world to sustainable transport. That's gonna mean they're gonna to need to build a lot more products than just the Model S, X, and 3. So their energy storage, I think it's important to note that they're trying to offer this not just for residential customers, but at a grid scale as well. Tesla's saying it's 200 kilowatt battery blocks called the power packs can be grouped together to offer megawatt or even gigawatt level installation. Tesla can scale up its battery technology to any size you need to accommodate a single family residential home or a massive factory. It doesn't matter, they can offer you the energy solution that's right for you. So the solar roof, which they unveiled, very cool technology. Um, I'm just excited for when this gets out in the market and can start contributing to Tesla's revenue. So they're saying right now that they're gonna be able to begin production in the summer of 2017 in Buffalo at that Gigafactory number two and customer installations in later 2017. So 2017 is setting up to be a huge year for Tesla. Model 3 is set to be delivered. The solar roof is set to be delivered all within this year. This has received a lot of attention already, but I thought it was important to highlight that in October 2016, Tesla is equipping all their vehicles with hardware needed for full self-driving capability. At the end of the year, they had 265 locations, uh, including stores, galleries, service plus, and service facilities. As of 2016, at the end of 2016, they had 790 superchargers open worldwide. This is gonna expand very quickly as they get ready for the Model 3. They also are working on something called destination charging. 
uh, working with hotels, different hospitality locations, resorts, malls, so that when you're parking your Tesla and doing your thing, you can charge it. It looks like they have over 4,000 locations with this around the world and 7,000 wall connectors. I wanted to highlight the fact that Tesla almost spends no money on marketing. They are able to generate significant media coverage of the company and vehicles, and that's how they're driving sales. Word of mouth is their primary marketing method other than that. Um, so they're getting all the, they're doing all this. They're disrupting the market, taking incredible market share without traditional advertising, um, like minuscule budget compared to other car companies. Just really impressive and shows how good the products are. In the first quarter of 2017, uh, they began offering the solar energy systems, aka the solar roofs and solar panels in Tesla stores. This is just going to make Solar City so much more efficient. Instead of having the call center, they can leverage Tesla's store base. So just from within that first gear factory, they think they're going to be able to produce. Uh, 500,000 vehicles annually and a significant amount of batteries uh, just from one Gigafactory. At Gigafactory 2, uh, where they're building the solar cells, um, they think they can man be manufacturing one gigawatt of solar panels annually just from this first uh, Gigafactory in Buffalo, New York. For those who've been following Tesla, interesting to note that they open source their patents. Here you can actually read why. Uh, they think that they're going to advance a common, rapidly evolving platform for electric vehicles by open sourcing their platform. This will make more people go electric, boost the infrastructure, uh, boost the consumer awareness, and this will not only help other companies making electric vehicles and Tesla, but it will also help the world. So just cool to see that in the filing. As of December 2016, Tesla had 18,000 employees. Solar City had about 12,000. So combined, the company has 30,000 employees now. After the acquisition of Solar City, they've started to integrate their uh, battery and energy revenue in one line and then the automotive revenue in another line. So we can think about Tesla's having these two parts, energy storage and generation, and then automotive. Uh, in January, 2017, they acquired Groman Engineering, which is a German company that has a lot of expertise in super high-tech automated production. Uh, and they think this is gonna allow them to facilitate and expand vehicle production and increase automation in their production process. So uh, very Tesla doesn't usually make acquisitions, but this Groman Engineering must be doing something really advanced and smart in the fields of automation and manufacturing because otherwise Tesla wouldn't have bought them. This is only gonna bring them closer to the cutting edge. Stated on their goal on the conference calls to become the world's best manufacturing company. Um, I think they're one step closer after acquiring Groman. This is what has a lot of shorts and analysts freaked out. They want to invest two to two 2.5 billion in capital expenditures ahead of Model 3 production. So that means before they even start producing the Model 3, which is in about three or four months, they want to spend two to 2.5 billion. So massive investment coming from Tesla in the first half of the year to get the Model 3 off the ground. They said in the shareholder letter that they're considering building new gigafactories. So I wanted to highlight this part, which shows they're exploring additional production capacity in Asia and Europe. A little deeper dive into Gigafactory 2. And so we had a little more granularity and it says that um, during this 10 year term, they intend to produce uh, photovoltaic cells and modules totaling approximately one gigawatt annually beginning in 2019. So this actually puts a timestamp on when they think they're going to hit that one gigawatt output level at Gigafactory 2. Very cool. Elon Musk takes no cash compensation to be CEO of Tesla and never has. Find me another auto company that can say that. I bet you can't. Whether you like Tesla or not, you cannot deny that they're growing like crazy. Their automotive revenue has more than doubled in two years. Now they're, did, they did 6.8 billion in 2016. Um, you know, so now they're quickly putting up the numbers to prove their growth story. Energy storage and generation. So this is the line item where Solar City is now lumped in, and that was part of the big jump at, uh, from 2015 to 2016. About half of that revenue is Solar City. But even without that, you can see that the energy business is growing very quickly. And this is going to be a line to watch very closely in 2017 and beyond as energy becomes an increasingly big part of their business. So a little bit more about the energy generation and storage segment. It was up over a thousand percent this year, but as I said earlier, 84 million, um, about half of the increase was from revenue of Solar City, but 82 million or 83 million was from energy storage revenue from their battery business as they're ramping up with utility scale projects like the Southern California Edison Mira Loma substation. So as they get bigger and bigger projects, probably like the one they just announced in Hawaii, we're going to continue to see 
very strong growth in the energy generation and storage business, not just from battery or not just from panels, but from batteries as well. So very exciting to see Tesla energy really get off the ground. I'm stoked because I think this could be just as big as the car business in a few years. It's going to take some time to get there, but in the meantime, we're going to be seeing crazy, crazy growth in Tesla energy. The gross margin of the energy, however, is pretty weak, 1.7% in 2016. They're claiming that that was uh, due to the build out of additional capacity. So I don't know if I fully buy that. We're going to have to watch the gross margin because they think eventually that their gross margin in energy can reach the levels of the automotive business, which would be 25, 30%. Right now they're at 1%. So we're gonna to need to see a lot of big improvement. I think they can do it. Interesting to see how low the gross margins are now, given how much higher they say they can go. To hear a little more granularity, uh, once again, they're saying that they were increasing the capacity of energy storage products and this hit gross margin in the quarter. So you're not looking at the real gross margin of their battery business because it's getting skewed because they're growing it so fast. Tesla has about 3.4 billion in cash, but remember they're gonna burn between two and two and a half billion just before they even start Model 3 production. So this cash buffer looks nice now, but it's not gonna last. And that's probably why they're gonna need to raise more. This line is pretty interesting. So their customer deposits, as you can see, grew massively this year, even though they delivered a lot of signature Model Xs. So their customer deposits um, without the Model 3 should have gone down pretty significantly because they should almost have none left on their books now that they've delivered all the pre-ordered Model X and Model S. Um, so now this 664 million number is almost strictly Model 3 deposits. Um, if we average a thousand deposit, that's over 650,000 customer deposits. I don't think it's all Model 3. I don't want to assume that. Maybe some people are putting down more for special Model 3s. Very encouraging to see 664 million in customer deposits. I think this confirms um, a lot of the rumors and the stuff we're reading online about the, the backlog for the Model 3 being about a half a million cars already. Long-term debt, they have about six billion in debt. Uh, a lot, you know, this was boosted by Solar City. They're having to expand the Gigafactory. There's no doubt Tesla's a risky company. They're 10, 15 years old, but they're still kind of running like a startup. They're a car company. It requires an incredible amount of capital to get their factory and products off the ground. Um, so they're no, by no means financially stable. Like this is a risky company. They have twice as much debt as they have in cash and they're burning their cash. They're gonna have to take on more debt. But I think in the future, this will prove to be a very profitable business model. It's not yet, but as it matures, it will be. And this debt position will not be an issue and they'll be able to pay it off no problem. But if they don't get there and they remain unprofitable, this debt level will become an issue. You know, I just think it's important to be, be honest about it. And the bottom line is Tesla is a very risky investment. The company uh, has a lot of debt. They're not making money. Their business requires a lot of capital. Their consumers are could be very sensitive to recession. I love Tesla and I'm still invested in it, but it is very important to note that they do have significant debt. Total revenues, if you look at it, the company's growing very quickly. Like I said, sure, they have debt, and, and the, but, but they're putting up the growth numbers to prove that they have something right in their business. So I'm okay with them taking on debt because the growth is really there. They put up $7 billion in revenue this year. You know, that was up like 60, 70% from $4 billion last year. So, you know, Tesla's doing it. Gross profit also continues to increase dramatically, 1.6 billion in 2016. That's a number that should continue to grow exponentially as Tesla improves its profitability and manufacturing processes. Loss from operations actually decreased in 2016 as they got closer to be being able to offer, operate profitably on their own. Um, this is a number I don't expect to go profitable in 2017 as they're continuing to investing. But I think in 2018, we are gonna see Tesla produce significant positive operating earnings if they can really hit those delivery numbers of 500,000. That's just a guess, but that's where I'm at. Tesla only had 123 million shares outstanding at the end of 2013. Um, and at the end of 2016, that number is 162 million. So despite all these capital raises, despite paying for the solar acquisition, Solar City acquisition in shares, they've only increased their share count by about 30%, 40% in those three years. So, you know, if you take into consideration the amount of money they raised, the factories they built, the amount their sales have grown, now they have acquired Solar City. I think Tesla is actually very prudently using their shares. Um, as currency to make acquisitions and fuel growth. I, I hate dilution on one hand, but I'm actually okay with the way Tesla's diluting because I think they've done it um, in an accretive way. And every time they dilute, they do it to invest in something that actually contributes to growing the company. The cash used in operating activities is <clears throat> actually 
very minuscule, only 123 million in, in 2016. And that kind of shows you the underlying profitability of the auto business, if they weren't investing in growth, is really improving. And the auto business is, my thesis has been that the auto business is a cash cow and is gonna be, an, is gonna produce billions in free cash flow once the Model 3 gets off the ground. And this is starting to prove that. Even though we just have Model S and X, you can already see the leverage coming into Tesla's business model. More on the Solar City acquisition, when it's all said and done, they issued about 11.1 million shares at 185 a share. Um, that puts the purchase price at about $2 billion. I think this is going to go down as an incredible steal. I was super skeptical of the acquisition at first. Now I'm all for it. I think, frankly, Solar City and being able to sell the panels and the roofs in Tesla stores is going to make the stores more productive. It gives Tesla an edge as they're the only fully integrated uh, electric car company. So I think this is going to go down as a brilliant acquisition in Tesla's history. Two billion is a steal for Solar City. If you included Solar City's revenue from 2016 and 2015 for the full years, you can see that Tesla would have put up seven and a half billion in revenue in 2016. So this business is already big. I think they're going to blow past 10 billion in revenue this year, or that the energy business is going to become a bigger and bigger chunk, uh, probably going to contribute over a billion in revenue this year alone, just from energy. Here they break down revenue by country. Really interesting to see the US has been a very strong growth region for them, more than half their sales. China, interesting to note that China is now doing over a billion in revenue for Tesla. This is epic, very pronounced trend with Tesla, which is that the second year they're in a market, they see sales flatline or decrease because there's so much hype the first year. This is actually something that happens to Shake Shack. There's so much hype the first year in a country and pent up demand that sales are through the roof. The second year that kind of falls off and they normalize and then they start to grow. So we see China, you know, they kind of flatlined and went down a little in 2015, but 2016 as Tesla expanded its stores, as they got into the groove and as sales normalized, they did over a billion, which is like 15% of their revenue now just from China. China. They, they list Norway, which, you know, is now becoming a smaller and smaller piece of their business, but interesting that Norway is still like 5% of Tesla's revenue. Other revenue, I think, is going through the same phenomena that I just mentioned that happened in China, where they had incredible growth in 2015, 2016, it kind of slows and normalizes, and 2017 will be another year of very strong growth in other revenue. The biggest highlight out of all this inter, uh, break, revenue breakdown is that Tesla is really working in China. China is poised to be the world's largest auto market. Um, they're selling electric cars like crazy. Having a cool brand in China for Tesla is going to be huge, and it's a very, very bullish sign that they're already doing over a billion in revenue. Here they include the price. They paid 150 million for Groman probably pretty cheap given the amount of expertise and automation they're gonna be able to use from that acquisition. That wraps it up. Subscribe if you liked it. Give me a comment if you have any ideas. That's HyperChange, see you guys next time.